Hello, so I made a little error. Uh, I forgot to have this microphone working and only the camera microphone was working for an episode I recorded. Because it, the, the quality is not as good as I would like it to be, this is the first game I played in my Europa League playoff against Inverness. Today, you will see the second one as well as all the transfers. Show the highlights. How will we get on against Inverness, Caroline and Thistle? Now, Inverness haven't won the Scottish Premier League in the time that the game's been going on. That has been for... Inverness, Caroline and Thistle won. Salford City, nil. Shit. As Dozel plays it out to Luke Shaw. I'm sorry that I did some serious football manager chatter there. As uh, Seri gets out, Seri scores. We're back in the game, 1-1. One, one. And that's just what we needed. Ball comes out to Dozel here, into Vidal. He's got a runner in Jeff Thomas. Jeff Thomas with a goal. A European goal for Jeff Thomas. Jeff Thomas, I'm going to show you Jeff Thomas. It's remarkable that he still performs as well as he does. He's only a two-star player. We've had him since Wrexham released him in League Two. They, they released him from League Two, uh, League two side. We picked him up, played him with a, like, a relatively big contract in the Van Arman National. The last season in the Premier League, a 7.26. So, so far, got an assist in the first game against Hull and has scored in Europe tonight. Jeff Thomas is magic. He wears a magic hat. He said, I forgot this. I forgot it. I'll have to relearn that. Oh, God. Okay, out to Luke Shaw from the free kick. Seri's in the middle. Seri with the header. And Alberto Seri continues where he left off. His third goal of the season in only a second game. And it's Salford 3, Inverness 1. After we went 1-0 down, we have fought back and fought back superbly. And that brings us to the end then. 3-1 to Salford. A fantastic start to our European campaign. We want in those Europa League group stages, of course. And uh, yeah, quick to Inverness. Played very well. But we came out on top. 3-1 winners. And we progress to the next game at their place. We didn't really progress anyway, but that was scheduled. So yes, 3-1. It's gone quite well. Run the intro. Let's get into the rest of this. Okay then, if we take a quick look at the outs, you can see that the Madge and Formiga have left for uh, for some money. Neither of them were playing that much. Uh, it's, it's sad really, the Madge really got a big injury, didn't he? And then we had to let him go. Uh, still a very capable striker, still two-star, but poacher instincts from him. Uh, he could be still a good player for somebody. Uh, as I say, Formiga's gone as well. Michael Ross, Stephen Hose, Adam Hansen, Yolan Kostov and Kenny Reckitt are all leaving on freeze already, so you know about those. But the big news is that Thomas Villalba has made his way uh, to Schalke. They are a Champions League club. He had a £40 million uh, pound release, uh, release clause and they met it we bought him for 8.25 we sold him for 40 million it's not too bad um, I did offer him a contract to try and get him to stay I think I offered him 75 but he'd clearly rather play in the Champions League with Schalke so fair enough I guess uh, a big loss to our team and has to be replaced and I feel like we've replaced him quite well so let's go through the ins then right then let's start off with Andre Dozel uh, has been at Tottenham Middlesbrough Watford and that's who we've signed him from he's played a couple of seasons in the Premier League and an underrated understated seasons really has done very well uh, played 60, uh, 63 games or Premier League games in that time has already played a game for us uh, it cost me 7 million and I think he'll be a worthy addition you can see from his attributes here mentally very good technically solid too uh, and yeah I, I think he's got everything you need in a sense midfielder that could be a little bit creative but at the same time it's got a little bit of steel in the middle his tackling's not great but i feel like with his work rate being 15 that we get up and down and put himself about he's got good strength I, I like him i think i think he offers a bit of everything and he's spirited and i think that's the main selling point the next player we've brought in and it's a player i've mentioned we've got him from a free transfer from real madrid is uh iosu ross i think that's how you'd say it I iosu iosu ross i think it probably would be um we might just call him ross we'll call him ross from friends ross from ross from friends um as i, I that happened very quickly and I've got no idea why but it's a thing now so Ross from Friends this is him he's going to play on that left sided uh, area for us very athletic can get up and down very well and uh, it's essentially our second choice for Barry who is our certainly our first choice left winger um, but we needed someone else and Ross from Friends will be that guy uh, Manak Kovacs has returned the defender that was with us last season uh, has, has been around a little bit not really found a home lots of transfers uh, picked him up for 10.75 million I think that's not too bad you know um, I think he'll do a job for us he can play left back play centre back uh, versus Versatility is the name of the game, and he can offer me that, uh, which is nice. Especially with Rekic leaving, we need to bring someone in who plays a similar role to him, and uh, this is our guy. And who knows? If it doesn't go well, next season we'll sell him again because he loves transfers. Brian's back. Um, I mean, no words needed to be said. He's had a couple of seasons at Osasuna. One decent season when they got promoted. One season when they got relegated. So, welcome back, Brian. We'll see if you actually play this time. Okay, a loan signing from Bayern Munich. Ko Kan Hayuk. 
I think that's how you say his name. Uh, as, and again, another physical specimen. At five foot ten, is very athletic though. Uh, technically very good, mentally very good. And obviously losing Villalba, it was important for us to bring in a couple of players that could do a job in the middle of the pitch. And he's one of them. The South Korean, forty-seven caps for South Korea at twenty-two years of age, isn't too shabby at all. You can see there. He's not really been playing for Bayern Munich all that much since his signing from Sporting, who bought him uh, and sold him on for a, for a very good profit, you might say. And um, we've got him on loan, for like one point nine million for the season, and uh, I'm sure he'll play his part this year. Now, just in case we decide to play a right back, we need to bring one in. Uh, Jorge Navarro, 21-year-old Spaniard, is our guy. He uh, can play centre-back, right back, uh, defensive midfield, wing back, central midfield, and right midfield. So he can do it all, really. Uh, but I'll be applying him in the sort of the right back area uh, if and when he plays. And I like him, attacking full-back. If we're going to play full-backs, I want them to be attacking. I've also put in a left-back that I'll show you in just a moment. Two and a half star current ability, maybe a four star player, you never know. And, uh, and and yeah, he's spent a lot of his career at Villarreal, but now he's moved to us. 1.4 million seemed to me to be a bit of a bargain. Yuri Tillemans, a football, it's fair to say at this stage in his career, a football manager, Hall of Famer, someone that we'll remember for years. If he goes on to great things, we'll all think we saw him first on football manager. If he doesn't go on to great things, we'll think, well, they got that wrong, didn't they? Messed it up completely. Uh, physically waning a little bit now, but mentally superb, technically excellent, and uh, again, needed a replacement for Villal, but I feel like we've got two really good ones in or maybe three really good ones in actually and uh and yeah he's one of them 31 years of age now 76 caps for belgium uh spent a lot of his time at liverpool got went on a free transfer to leeds ironically both teams got relegated we've picked him up for 5.75 million which i don't think is too bad at all um and i'm expecting him to play a pivotal part in this season cameron humphreys uh starts his career at manchester city's youth academy has spent a long time at huddersfield in the championship and i've finally given him the promotion uh, to the to the premier league sorry 2.9 million and a key point really being that he's english uh good strength physically again very very good uh so 15 tackling 14 marking 13 heading at 30 years of age he literally has come in as a backup center back and helps us fill our english quota at six foot four he will be a titan for me that's the that's the plan anyway he probably won't plan and be sold at the end of the year for a little bit of profit right two to go then luke shaw defender left back you'll have probably heard of him 41 caps for england has been at manchester united and southampton and on this game fulham newcastle and celtic which is where i've picked him up for 4.5 million a little bit pricey perhaps for a player that is uh well, to the SPL on a free transfer but I still think he's got a lot to offer if I was going to get a left back in I wanted someone that I knew I could rely on and I think this is the kind of guy that I can rely on an experienced fullback who can play all along that left side if needs be three star current ability is absolutely fine and whether we play with fullbacks or not is still kind of left up for debate we are doing it at the moment but it may well change you'll see that in just a minute and let's seal things off then with the signing of uh, Sir Can Erdem I think that's how you say his name uh, young 22 year old French defender looks very very good basically looks like Andy Backhouse in a few years time that's why I'm thinking anyway as i say physically very good strong six foot two uh good tackling marking the head and all the things you want in a defender of course and mentally not too bad either uh, in terms of the history been at bordeaux been at angers uh play on loan for a couple of seasons ironically where we had renard from you might remember and uh and Monier as well i think i think he'll do well for me 10 million pounds quite an expensive transfer but but you can see from all the, the transfers we've made that their values are, are more than the price we've paid for them and that's what you want when you make transfers you don't want it to be you don't want to have overpaid for anyone and i don't think we've done that this summer and overall relatively happy so there it is then we spent 45.8 million we have uh, we've sold 43.6 million mainly on villalba uh, so it's been a successful summer transfer window if you look at our balance here you can see we've got 20 million in the bank 12 million or 30 million left to spend i may ask for a little bit more we do still need a striker in my opinion and we've picked up an injury which is going to be pivotal to our season uh so yeah another strike it is certainly in the offing we'll do that though after we've played uh, in Vanessa caledonian thistle in the europa league and the, as you saw from the first game it went quite well we won 3-1 uh steady with two Te uh, jeff thomas with one and in the premier league we've beaten hull city and we have lost to southampton which is disappointing but today we play in venice caledonian thistle in the europa league uh, second leg and i will show you the team for today's game now we have a little bit of a conundrum uh sandoval is out injured for three weeks so he can't play today which means we're gonna have to play peter phillips in an unfamiliar trequatista role next to alberto seti the rest of the team somewhat picks itself uh daniel phillips is going to be at right back frank hauser and Kovacs will be in the middle today. Shaw at left back. Barry, Dazelle, Vidal, Peter on that right side. Terry and Peter Phillips. A bench stacked full of talent. A lot of midfield talent in there. And even Kendall Peters is back from uh, from Olympic duty as well. I think that's where he's been. I think that's where. Yeah, let's assume so. We could have put, we could of course play Kendall Peters up front today, but we're going to go with Peter Phillips and then maybe switch it round. Uh, Kendall Peters and come on, make a very speedy impact. So I think that's what we'll do with him. And hopefully today though we do the job. Uh, we are now away at Inverness Caledonian Thistle, and a chance at the Europa League group stage is on the line. 
Now, as I mentioned at the start of the episode today, I have recorded, well, I recorded the first, I did the transfer, like, sort of rundown, oh, well, through th- on goal, maybe. I did the transfer rundown and the first Inverness game, and it only recorded my camera audio, not this audio. Um, so I was talking through a lot of things, really, that I think we do need another striker, uh, and... The, the way our team is set up now, we have a lot of versatile footballers, and I think that's going to be really pivotal to how we go about our business this year. We, we don't have a set structure like planned. I don't intend to play three at the back all season. I feel like with Europe and with the Premier League, you need to find that balance, much like Leicester in real life, right? Leicester are going into Europe this season, and they don't know how they're going to react to it. They don't know how they're going to cope with it. They're going to have to bring in new players, and we're in a similar position. We've not been in Europe before. You essentially need two squads when you're in Europe, and you need to have the versatility to change things up, depending on injuries, suspension, and all things like that so that's what I've tried to do as Inverness go through here Caldez come back and Browse pops it home holy smokes they've gone one a lot this happened before they've done it again but we have to try keep an open mind and I think generally speaking we now have a squad which is capable of finishing I think we're, we're predicted to finish sort of 7th to ninth, 40 to 1 to win the league um, better odds than Leicester let's put it that way but I don't know how how sort of credible that is based on the fact that we don't know how we're going to react to the Europa League and especially if we get through this game I'm kind of talking as if we're going to get through here as Martin has a free kick oh good god okay this isn't going very well let's let's just counter attack for now if we get through this game I'm going to rephrase this now then you know it's something we've got to think about we can't just play our best 11 every single game we need to rely on squad players and that's going to be a key part of this season and hopefully it's something we can we can go through and achieve uh we haven't got massive amounts of money to spend and a lot of people might be thinking to themselves why don't you bring in players from liverpool they got relegated they're obviously gonna have decent players well they had five or six but a lot of them are over like 70 80 grand a week they were worth 50 million plus and i can't afford to bring like three of those players in or even one of those players in really because of the wage demands as they go through again Diaz shot wide Inverness all over me so yeah I just want to clarify because I know lots of people will say why didn't you get anyone from Liverpool it was just a case of they didn't have the quality I needed for, like they got relegated for a reason they didn't actually have a great deal of quality they had three or four that were very good but then after that slim pickings so um I'm happy with the score we've got as I say I still think we need to bring in a striker and yeah let me know in the comments what do you think best bit of business worst bit of business I guess you'll be the, f- <laughs> the first people to let me know as we have a shot on goal and save by Inverness now chat over game highlights Luke Shaw's cut it out then and it's interesting fullbacks how are we going to do with some fullbacks we don't really know how is Barry going to do with some fullbacks he's used to that defensive responsibility and now I've said to him just let it go Barry just let it go Luke Shaw's got you in fact let's look for the overlap I mean we've got them to look for Inverness come forward again though this is not good they've got an away goal at our gaff obviously we're not playing Jeff Thomas today Peter's back from his uh, Olympic gallivant um, Peter Phillips, as I say, up top with Surrey. Could play Peter Phillips in behind, but I like the two striker presence, especially when you play wingers like Peter and Barry. Ball into Surrey, shot on goal, saved by Smith. Bit of a pop shot from him there, I love that. Peter, corner kick, played in. Kovacs, Oh, just over that far post. Okay, throwing deep in their half. Not a good one. Partington, I didn't even notice. Partington plays for Inverness. Did I notice that in the first game? I may have done. I can't remember. Well, he's there. Hello there. You might remember Jack Partington from uh, from the Salford story a few episodes ago, a few few seasons ago. An away goal will be crucial as Sully heads forward. Obviously, Inverness got one, so if we get one as well, it evens things up and means they would have to score three. If we don't get one, it's going to be very nervy. Watkins, Calder. Oh, my God. We must attack. We have to score a goal. No Sandoval, no party. That seems to be the thing right now. In the first game, they absolutely dominated as far as passing was concerned. And it seems they're doing the same thing today. Ball headed down, and he's just unmarked. What are we doing? 2-0 down. The Europa dream is gone. If it stays like this, they go through. Might need a change in tactic here. I think at half time, I know what I'm going to do. And it better work okay Barry left side we know he can be deadly Barry get down that byline whip one in oh he's gone for it he's gone for it early Phillips is there is that a goal is it counting oh it is counting that is a vital goal Peter Phillips with it even S2 Salford 1 and sort of 10 minutes before half time it was a must score goal without it we would have really struggled Barry I thought he was going to run down the line but he hit it in early Peter Phillips just oh he looks a touch offside there maybe a yard and uh, he strikes it with his left foot keeper probably should do better but it's 2-1 and we take the aggregate lead okay at half time I'm going to say we've played well, but there's room for improvement. I probably should have bollocked in there, but I'm not trying to upset them. What we're going to do is move Peter and Barry further forward. We're going to drop Peter Phillips in behind Seti, who we're going to make an attacking target man, and then change Peter Phillips to a playmaker, because that's where he's most comfortable. Right, that's what we're going to do. Try and get a bit more control of this game. Push our dangerous players forward, Peter and Barry. I mean, this is a big season for Peter. This is kind of make or break. If Peter has a good season, he'll be here again next year. If Peter doesn't have a good uh, good season this season, we'll move him on and try and get the better in. Because a lot of people are saying, get a better right winger in. It's the position you need to strengthen. But actually, 
if he continues to develop in the way he is doing, the injury obviously hurt him a few seasons ago, but if he carries on, he'll be fine. And I think he'll be a, a big player for us. And so we get it clear. Partington now, the metronomic midfielder, Diaz, lays it off to Martin. Ball into the middle. Watkins is there. Parky with a great save. And oh my God, they've scored again. And things are tied up. It was 3-1 at our gaff. It's 3-1 at theirs. I mean, we need to try and control this game. This is a bit nervy. This is a bit nervy for a, for a bloody thing. Peter, corner kick, another away goal here, and that is huge for us. Shaw with a header, knocked down, McDonald clears it. No one was there poaching. That's where you need a Sandoval, maybe a Kendall Peters, who, again, in maybe 15, 10 minutes' time, you might bring him on. Ball played out to this right side. Phillips gets there, plays it forward to Peter, and now where's he going to go? Peter, he plays it back. I've got so many Peters and Phillips, it's so confusing. Seddy heads on to Vidal. Vidal in the area, not known to be there usually. Lays it back to Peter, squares it to Seddy, and Seddy puts it in. A second away goal. I'm pretty sure they count in Europe. I'm sure they do. It's 5 4. I mean, Inverness are not making this easy for like the third best team in Scotland. Vidal chests it down, knocks it back to Peter, who slips it across to Seddy, and on the half volley, or on the volley, on the volley it was, puts it home in front of a packed crowd. We've really brought the away support on this game. We're all going on a European tour isn't strictly true. Some of us are going on a European tour, not all of us. I've done a lot of talking today. I'm sorry if it was a little bit quick, but I had a lot to say. As Inverness come forward again, Vidal heads it away, and then they've, they've put it back out again. Diaz, ball in, Partington was there. Shaw gets the block on it. Ball played into the back post. Called the park with a good save. Parky with an excellent save. We're going to make the change then. Kendall Peters is going to come on for Alberto Sedu. You're going to play him as the advance forward. We're also going to bring Jeff Thomas on that right side. I may make a third change. Ryan Gould, for the experience, is going to come on too. A triple change up top. Can we see this out? Really, I'm playing for another goal. Another goal seals this. Parky with the goal kick. High and long up to Jeff Thomas. And they win the ball. Do we win the nod down? We do. Dozel now. Four towards Kendall Peters, but it's not really good enough. And Kovacs cuts it out. Dozel. Forward to Ryan Gould. We've got men ahead of him. If we can pick one out. He's gone across the other side. Vidal. Oh, is that a foul? Jeff Thomas is there. He scored in the first leg. Oh, he doesn't score in this one. Key moment in the match. We, uh, I guess, I think Inverness still need two, though. We're in quite a strong position. Okay, time is ticking down rapidly. I, I mean, I'm changing nothing at this point. They've had 10 more shots than us. 20% more, uh, 20 more possession. They, they've been all over us this game. And we have come through and got through due to our first round game. Or the first leg game, even. Holy moly. We progress to the, to the, I need to Champions League then, the Europa League group stages. And I will show you that draw right now now oh we've been given 1.7 million for getting to the group stage we need this sort of money i will say there was lots of liverpool players i said i was looking at and didn't get in i mentioned peter and it's a big season for him if we don't get him this is the guy i'm looking at drago van matic so they currently want 25 million and i can't afford that but uh this is the guy i'm looking at 19 year old serbian wonder kid at liverpool looks to be looks to me at least to be a bit of a world beater and i would not mind getting him in uh it might be difficult but keep an eye on him drago van matic so keep an eye on him it's impossible for you to do so okay then it's the Europa League draw. We're not in pot one. We're not in pot two. We're in pot three. Okay, we're, in, we're a third seed, which means we're going to get two relatively good sides. Let's put it that way. Uh, and there's some big boys in there. Valencia, Leverkusen, Ajax, uh, Olympic Lyon. Obviously, we beat Ajax in pre-season, so bring them. Okay, we can go through this slot quite rapidly. It's the third pot that we're interested in. Okay, any interesting ones there? I guess we'll look as we go along. Napoli, Besiktas, no, thank you. I don't want... Okay, we can't get the next one. Valencia would be interesting against Gary Neville. We didn't get them, though. Uh, Leverkusen and Stoke, we can't go into. This would be horrible. Oh, good. Thank God we could avoid that one. Hanover and Leon. That's not that easy, but I guess we'll take that. I'm not, I'm not sure how good Hanover are, but Leon, obviously, one of the better sides in France, you'd imagine. As we go through, we get one more team. And uh, who do we want from this, really? I mean... So I guess anyone but Steel Bucharest, and I think we're quite happy. Vienne, maybe Rapid Vienne. We don't want those two. Oh, Rek Rajika from Croatia. I think we'll take that. I think I've had a few regens from there in, in the past, but yes, okay, not too bad. As I say, not sure good. Uh, not 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 too sure how good Hanover are. I mean, they're in the Europa League, so they can't be dreadful. Last year they finished sixth in the Bundesliga. Okay, and they've got a regen called Lucas Romero, another football manager wonder kid. Uh, okay. I'm happy enough. Right then, that does bring us to the end of today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please drop a like on it. Probably a little bit longer than normal uh, if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And if you missed Andy Tannoy's testimonial, there is a link in the description. It was the last video I put out if you want to just check it from my channel. Go and have a watch. Andy Tannoy's testimonial for Salford. If you play against Ajax, you might enjoy it. Now then, good luck with care. From me, Lots of Benji. Until next time, I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. So there is no Ben Sports news. Um, you know, he's, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to be part of this anymore. So... I'll see him in January.